Well, I won't give up on us, even if the skies get rough. I'm giving you all my love. I'm still looking up. When you're needing your space, to do some navigating. Hey, welcome back everybody. Today's objectives are to identify the components that make up DNA and identify the base pair rules in regard to DNA nucleotides. There are some things that you need to know about DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. It stores and transmits the genetic information and they're considered the blueprints of life. The blueprints are the instructions to make proteins that are needed in your body. Proteins form the structural units of cells and help control chemical processes within cells. Some of the stuff you may remember from chapter 2, but we're going to build upon it in chapter 12 and 13. DNA is an organic compound because it contains carbon. It's made up of repeating subunits called nucleotides. If we look at the general structure of a nucleotide, it consists of a nitrogen base. These are our A's, T's, C's, and G's that we went over in Chapter 2, as well as a 5-carbon sugar and 3-phosphate groups. We just went over the three parts of a nucleotide. Uh, let's get a little bit more specific with the parts. We have deoxyribose, which is the 5-carbon sugar. We have our phosphate groups just like uh, the phosphate groups in our ATPs and we have the nitrogen bases. The nitrogen bases are broken down into four different kinds, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, but we can have subgroups called purines and pyrimidines. Purines consist of adenine and guanine. These are two ringed uh, nucleotides as we can see down here and the pyrimidines are cytosine and thymine which are just one ring. Nucleotides are sometimes considered to be called base pairs so we have some base pair rules which we have to go over. First, base pairs are uniform in length. In each case a purine is paired with a pyrimidine. Nucleotides have specific pairs. Cytosine always forms a bond with guanine it's a triple bond as you can see right here and adenine always forms a bond with thymine which is a double bond here and when we talk about bonds we're talking about covalent bonds the last of the base pair rules is the nucleotide sequence in one nucleotide chain so if we look at these three this is one nucleotide chain and this is the other nucleotide chain when we look at one nucleotide chain of the DNA molecule, it's an exact complement of the nucleotide sequence in the other chain, which goes along with base pair rule 2. G complements C, C complements G, A complements T, T complements A, and so on. We could also show you another strand here. Um, we have a DNA strand A, T, C, G, C, G, T, A, its complement would be the opposite of the base pair, which is for A it's T, for T it's A, C is G, G is C, C is G, G is C, T is A, and A is T. Today's objectives were to identify the components that make up DNA, and we took a look at the nucleotides and how the nucleotides consist of an amine or one of the other nucleotide bases, uh, deoxyribose, which is the sugar, and three phosphates. We went over the base pair rules. We just need to remember that A's complement T's and they bond together, and C's complement G's. If you have any questions, please bring it to the next class.